new videos every day. I do admit that I have watched TV and I do watch TV sometimes, but I will be the first person to say that television creates this mindless zombie state in people and you're this passive recipient of all of this action and you're doing nothing. Um, there's actually been research done that shows that children, when they sit and they receive, receive, receive all this information, that they are getting too much, that they actually build up this, this want, they want to like fight and let out and, and release this aggression. And so after they've been watching TV for such a long period of time, they want to go out and fight and cause an effect. I think that's interesting. Um, what I do now when I watch TV is I always try to have a project. Um, I, I do a lot of arts and crafts, and so I'm only kind of half watching the TV out of the corner of my eye. And, and I actually feel good because I accomplish so much while I'm watching TV because I'm, you know, painting something or doing my arts and crafts or whatever. But I don't want to be one of those mindless zombies. You know when you've really learned something if you can turn around and teach it to somebody. That's how I know when I really learned something, when I can turn around and explain it to somebody else. To me, learning is kind of like, I don't know, it's like rediscovering the whole world. That's what learning is. It's, honestly, when I learn something, I see it out in the world. I see more. But I notice when I teach my kids something, suddenly they see it everywhere. And it's the same with me. When I learn something, suddenly I see it everywhere. Learning, it like opens up your eyes and you become more in tune in, like you're in the present moment. When you've learned stuff, you can see it. You're there. You experience life as opposed to kind of walking around half asleep. And you know, stuff I'd never seen. You know, I, I took a whole geology class once and suddenly I'm seeing rocks everywhere and mountains and things make sense. And I don't know. It's just like I'm much more in sync with the world after I've studied something. If I had nothing to be interested in, I wouldn't be happy at all. <laughs> um, I think that in order to be happy, you have to you have to find something to be interested in. And there is a lot, there is a lot to be interested in. Um, there was one point in my life when I was kind of down. I, I had gotten a divorce and I was not happy at all. And I forced myself, uh, I actually joined the Humane Society and I volunteered there. And suddenly I had something to get interested in. I really wanted to get these pets adopted and I, I had like this whole new passion and suddenly I totally forgot about being sad and, you know, poor me, that kind of a thing. So find an interest, find something you're interested in, anything, it doesn't matter you know, humane society, arts and crafts, uh, anything, and uh, you'll be happier. When I was 22 years old, I graduated from college and I had accomplished all of my goals. I worked very hard and I landed a, what I thought was a good job and I thought I was going to be happy. Uh, I started buying things. I bought a truck and I bought a piano. And interestingly enough, I Actually, I didn't feel very fulfilled. I thought, wow, is this, is this it? You know, now this is all I'm going to be doing is just buying things now. Uh, and it kind of scared me. I thought, man, I'm, I'm settling down. Whereas before I had, I'd always been learning and growing and doing things and, and life was exciting. And now it, it literally, it stopped and all I had to look forward to was purchasing stuff. So what I did was I actually applied to the Peace Corps the very next day. And I got accepted and I went to Africa. And I spent some time in Africa in the Peace Corps. And again, I was learning and growing and doing stuff. And it was very exciting. And I had exciting stories to tell. And I was contributing to society. And I was also learning a lot for myself. And I came back from Africa. And I continued teaching. And then uh, after teaching for a, a while again, I thought, gosh, you know, it's, it's happening again. I'm, I'm getting 
I don't know, sedate and and maybe a little bored and boring. I'm getting boring. So I realized I needed to keep learning and growing and doing stuff. So I enrolled in graduate school and graduate school was very exciting. I met all sorts of interesting people and I, I traveled and I did research and it was, it was really a challenge and I, you know, met the challenge and after four years I, I graduated and, uh, and, and same kind of thing again. I, you know, got an apartment and I bought a china hutch and the dishes to go in it. And again, I started slowing down and getting bored and I really wasn't all that happy. So what I actually did is I enrolled in some classes and I, I started up my own business on top of uh, having a job. I was a professor and I started my own consulting business, which was very exciting because I was always given new contracts to work with schools and improve their test scores and write different curricular materials and stuff like that. But anyway, my, my whole point is it's exciting to keep learning and growing and doing stuff and you become I don't know, not not so bored with life and and you become interested in things and it's it's far more important to be interested in stuff uh than to have stuff. Actually my role model has always been my grandmother. She is is she has now passed away since, but she took classes into her 90s. She would always plan a trip. She would study the language. She would study the culture and the history, and then she would plan a trip to that location. My grandmother passed away at I think it was 94 years old. She would have she would attend these classes into her 90s and she would have study groups and they would ask questions and they would have little arguments and they would look things up in the encyclopedia and that's what I want to be like I want to be always you know reading new books and able to talk to people and 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 know what's going on in this world and I I think that's that's why I'm I'm a happy person. A lot of people, um, you know, they think they tell me, "Oh, Carolyn, you're not burned out. You're not one of those educators who's gotten sick of life." And part of it is because I enjoy life. I keep doing things. I keep doing new things, um, and that's helped me. Every once in a while, people will come up to me and they will tell me, "You know, Caroline, there's." There's something different about you. You know, I can't quite put my finger on it, but you're so, you know, you're so enthusiastic and you're so excited about things. And, you know, what is it? And actually, you know what it is? It's I'm into self-improvement. I'm into trying to make myself a better person. I mean, why give up? You know, there's always something more I can learn or or do. And so I, I do that. I read books and I take classes and I attend seminars and, and people notice. People are always telling me, you know, you, Caroline, you, you just haven't given up. And, and it's true. I, I never give up. Didn't Winston Churchill say that? Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. I think that was his graduation speech at Harvard or he's invited to give some big speech. That's what he said. Never give up. So, you know, do those self-improvement things. You'll you'll actually find that that you will become more enthusiastic, and and people will notice it in you, and and you'll look younger. <laughs> <laughs> there are over 350 videos on our channel, and I doubt you've seen them all. And the topics range from weight loss, nutrition sexual health, all the way to psychology and mind control, and anywhere in between. And I think if you check them out, you're going to find some really interesting stuff.